Hello all, my name is Krishnaik and welcome to my YouTube channel. So guys, today in this particular video, we are going to discuss about this library which is called as number. Now, if I talk about number guys, it is just like a just-in-time comp compiler for Python, okay? Now, when I say just-in-time compiler, we obviously know and we say that yes, Python is a slow programming language because it is an interpreted programming language. And if I consider some other, other programming languages like Java and C++, they use this just-in-time compiler, wherein they convert the entire code into the machine level code, right? Whereas in the case of Python, it is an interpreted programming language. It gets directly executed. This conversion is not there. And because of this, Python is really slow when compared to Java and C++. So what if, is there an option that we can make this Python code as a just-in-time compiler or can we make it convertible into a machine code, right? And yes, we can do it by using this specific library called as number. Now, if I talk about number guys, it is a just-in-time compiler for Python that works best on code that uses NumPy arrays and functions and loops. So guys, understand in Python, we use a lot of things like data frames, list and all, right? There are so many different, different data structures, but this kind of just-in-time compilers definitely works with arrays, with functions, with for loops and all the things that we are basically using. So definitely if you are actually most, more interested towards data structures and algorithm, this library is definitely a go ahead and we can definitely use it for that specific purpose. The most common way to use number is through its collection of decorators that can be applied to your functions to instruct number to compile them. So we'll try to see some of the examples, but before that, first of all, we need to install this number. So in order to install it, I'll just try pip install number. So I'll just try to execute it. And this particular installation will be taking place. Here you can see that the requirement is already satisfied. Now let's see, here I'm just going to take this particular function and we are going to understand how the function is basically getting compiled into machine learning code, or sorry, machine code, machine level code, okay? So first of all, I will be importing from Numba, import JIT, then import NumPy as NP and time. Remember guys, this type of, this library will not be working with data frames probably when you write some EDA kind of code, no. It will be working mostly, as I said, if you are using NumPy arrays, if you are using for loops, if you are using different kind of loops, and you really need to fasten that specific process. Now, first of all, what I'm doing, I'm uh, just considering some 100 elements. I'm reshaping into 10 cross 10 matrix. And then I create a function which is called as go underscore fast. And here I'm just doing something like this for i in range of a dot shape of zero. And I'm just trying to do some kind of mathematical operation, which is like numpy dot tan h. So I'm trying to find out the tan h of each and every numbers. And then I'm just returning the value by adding it. This is only the function. This is just a function which is doing some kind of mathematical operation for this many number of elements. Okay. You can write any kind of mathematical function. You can calculate the sine function. You can calculate cost. I have just written that. Okay. We'll try to find out the tan h of this particular number. And then we'll try to add it up. Perfect. Now, when I am actually defining this particular function, in order to make it compile with the just-in-time compiler, we need to add a decorator like this. So at the rate JIT, and I just have to mention, no Python is equal to true. Once I mention this, this basically indicates that this function is going to get compiled whenever we call for the first time. Once we call for the first time, it is going to get compiled. And again, after that particular, again, if I try to call this particular function, then the pre-compiled version will get called right, which will be my machine level code. So for the first time, it may take more time to execute because it is getting compilation. So in the second time, you don't have to worry about it because it will be very, very less amount of time it will take in order to call this particular function. Now see this, in order to do this, what I'm doing for the first time, I'm just saying that, okay, let's go and see some time. I'm going to start this particular time over here. I'm going to call this particular function, giving my input parameter as X, and then I'm going to end this, okay? Then I'm going to just find out the difference between end and start time. Okay. So initially when I'm calling it over here for the first time, the compilation will start. Okay. The compilation will start. But if I try to call it again, now the function is already compiled. Now it will basically be taking from the cache. Okay. It will again not recompile it guys, because I already have the compiled version. So obviously you will be knowing that this particular time will be more than this particular time. If you don't believe me, let's go and execute. Here, what I'm doing, I'm just calling this function. I'm just writing time dot uh, start time, and this is my end time, and just I'm trying to find out the difference. Similarly, I'm doing this over here. Now, let's go ahead and execute it. So, I will try to execute it. So, here you can see that 
elapsed with compilation is somewhere around 0.4 seconds but again when i try to execute it is hardly 0.0 very less number of seconds right L let me do one thing let me just make it as 1000 elements say probably i want okay and once i execute it now you can see 0.11 second right then again you have 0.0, .0 seconds you can see how fast it has become in this particular second one because now the function is being compiled and again it is basically taking from the cache right again if i try to execute any number of times it will be doing the same thing so let me just restart the kernel okay restart the kernel and i'm just going to execute it once again let's see so it has started now here you can see 0 0.30 second and for the second time it is predicting 0 0.0 second now let's go and understand this is a very simple example when should we use this number suppose if you are hardcore writing uh, some algorithms probably you're learning some algorithms sorry data structures and algorithms probably are trying to solve a competitive programming uh, definitely you can go with it you can definitely go with uh, different types of loopings uh, with with respect to functions inside that functions if you are using extensively numpy arrays and all you can definitely use number okay so just give a hands-on guys just try it out i think you'll love it and this is how we can make the python code at least faster this will definitely not work for data frames probably uh, other kind of data structures which uh, is mostly involved in ed and all but definitely with respect to numpy arrays it will be used so i hope you like this particular video please do subscribe to the channel if you are not already subscribed i'll see you all in the next video have a great day thank you one all bye bye